Introducing Super Smash Brothers, where all your favorite characters go toe-to-toe -to -toe in one four-player star-studded slam fest. Only on Nintendo 64. See, I still make Nintendo things and, and reference Nintendo jokes on here. I just need love. I just want love! Oh, Nintendo. I... This is something that I feel the need to make because, if, if you're aware, we recently changed our name to Digicades and we removed a lot of our older content because we don't want people to think that that's a representation of what we do now. Um, the quality of those videos that we removed weren't exactly the greatest and this is a topic that I did cover a couple years ago but I, I felt the need to revisit it definitely because I think it's an important issue. I, I think it's an important, or not really an issue, I think it's an important topic that, um, that deserves to be talked about because a lot of people seem to just want to focus on the negative of Nintendo and not ever seem to focus on the positives of this company. Um, they have a very weird reputation nowadays in um, the gaming world, the gaming landscape. So this is something that I, I think is warrant or <laughs> I think has warranted a, um, a discussion. I just personally want to talk about why I like them a lot. Um, a lot of people I think are would be interested in this. Um, so let's get started. Overall, Nintendo, over the course of my lifetime, has, I'd say, altered and shaped, you know, and definitely changed some of the experiences in my life. I, I love this company, like from the bottom of my heart. I, I love Nintendo. You know, they have. I, I can't imagine my childhood without them, and I definitely can't imagine adulthood without them. I, all the time. I mean, I'm constantly. You know, looking at what Nintendo does, I, I like to play their games a lot, and then, I mean, obviously I like to play other stuff too, you know, I, I love Sony a lot as a company, but, you know, while Sony has given me things like Ratchet and Clank, Uncharted, they introduced me to Kingdom Hearts, um, nothing seems to have had the impact that Nintendo has had as a company, because when you think about the sheer volume of really good really well done franchises from them i mean i mean you guys see behind pretty much every quack video you always see the kid icarus it's over there kid icarus wall scroll behind me and i, I love kid icarus it's one of my favorite franchises but i really wish that it would get more representation um mario zelda pokemon i mean the, the big three right there the big three that have severely changed people's lives and I, that sounds negative i don't want the negative connotation with that drastically changed people's lives and introduced them to new ways to go on adventures and have these cool you know experiences with friends and that's something else i love about nintendo i, I know if you guys are a frequent viewer of my videos you know that i'm a kind of a big buff for local multiplayer i love it there's there's like no greater feeling than sitting around you know with your mates just having like a good local multiplayer jam session like it's great <laughs> and so many so many gaming companies just don't seem to respect i guess that aspect of gaming anymore because everything you know you always hear everything's moving online everything is going to you know online multiplayer or you know short single player campaigns and you know while while i'm not saying that that's bad you know, I, I think the inclusion of only multiplayer in a lot of games, I think that's a great thing, but I don't want local multiplayer to be taking a back seat to it. And that's something that Nintendo has really shown me that they're, that's one of their strengths, that's one of their strong points, you know, they're very strong in that regard. I, every time I go to a friend's house, you know, we'll always, we'll bring out the PS4, the Xbox One, maybe the PC, and we'll game a little bit. But then, you know, the time comes where we want to game together, and we always go to the Wii U. Like, every time. I, I really... The only time recently that I can think of that we did anything else was play Rocket League. By the way, you should play Rocket League. Brilliant game. Seriously, that game is amazing. And I'm really sad that I didn't play it last year, because it would have easily made the quack. The, the top five video games of 2015, yeah, Rocket League would have been on there if... I had actually played it, but I didn't, and that saddens me. And kind of springboarding off that local multiplayer point, Nintendo seems to be the only company having any freaking fun anymore in the gaming industry. You constantly see headline after headline about profits and sales and all of this, 
all this crap, you know, and we and we lose sight of of what makes games games. We lose sight of what makes these entertainment, these these interactive experiences fun. And that's what I love about Nintendo. They just they kind of strip all that away. I mean, sure, yeah, when it's time to do business, they do business. But they seem to like to strip that away and just have fun and just in you know and have maybe self-deprecating humor and and joke about themselves and you know joke about the industry as a whole and that's why I like Nintendo Directs. I love Nintendo Directs. And I while and there's something to be said for Nintendo having fun at E3 the past few years. When you look at what they've done, you know, they went with the all digital event and while I'm definitely not saying that that's the best thing to do. I still would love if they had live conferences or at least have some conference where they just show the digital event in front of a bunch of people rather than just stream it online. At least they had fun with it. You know, I mean, we can all talk about how crap E3 2015 was for Nintendo, but up until the actual digital event, it was pretty good. And even then, the digital event showed me that while, oh wow, it's obvious that they're stripping support for the Wii U and 3DS down, they're still enjoying themselves as a company. And that, that was a pleasure to see. While, yes, the games they showed weren't exactly top tier, they still enjoyed themselves. And there is definitely something to be said for that. While, and, and I'm not docking Sony Microsoft here, love the companies. Well, I like Sony. Microsoft, I'm always iffy on. But, while I do enjoy them, it, sometimes it is boring and dreadful watching their conferences because I'm just sitting there like, And well, yes, while some of the games they showed last year were, you know, pretty spectacular looking, you know, a lot of it's CG trailers, a lot of it's just cutscenes from games, and, you know, I mean, I appreciate good graphics as much as the next guy. You know, I always put gameplay before graphics, you know, 90% of the time. Sorry, I had to burp. But, you know, Nintendo... While Nintendo is stuck in the past on some things... Sometimes it's almost a good thing that they're stuck in the past because they still have this mentality that people want to game around each other. People want to focus on gameplay instead of visuals. And that's something that I love. That is definitely something I love about them. I love their I love their mentality that they want to focus on gameplay because let me tell you, it's you know, it's kind of nice when you see a new video game trailer and you see gameplay. Yeah. Yeah, in an industry that seems so stuck up its own bum most of the time. Nintendo seems to be the, the humble guy on the side. They seem to be like, when you have these two rivals on the schoolyard, and then you have this one kid just sitting over doing his own thing, like, that's Nintendo. You know, Sony and Microsoft are over here fighting over each other, and then the PC Master Race is like the teacher above all of them because PC gaming is awesome. But Nintendo seems to be that kid on the side who's like, we don't really care what people think. You know, we're just here. We're just here like everyone else. And and I like that. I, I like that humble mentality that they have. That's something I've always adored about Nintendo, you know, even when I was younger. Because, you know, even back then, you know, in the days of the console wars, and which is still oddly kind of going on today. I mean, it was kind of the same story, because you talk about, you know, Sega and Sony you know, versus Nintendo. It always seems to be somewhat like, like two companies versing Nintendo, which is weird. I, it's just weird, but it it was kind of the same thing because, you know, we all talk crap about how they have, you know, like a third party support and how a lot of their games are, you know, catered more towards family friendly stuff. They just seem to want to be a part of the gaming space and they seem to be, I'd say one of the five companies doing it right. You know, I'd say companies like Rockstar, Valve, you know, obviously Nintendo. It, and that's sad because I can't. I'm trying to think of two other companies that I, I that like I love that I think are doing games right. Insomniac Games, they're doing a good job too. And then Naughty Dog. There we go, Naughty Dog. That's the last one. I'd say those are probably like my five favorite gaming companies. I want to say Square Enix really badly, but I don't because they've had some really crap business practices in the past few years, but they still make amazing games, but still. Oh my god. I love Nintendo. You know, Nintendo has 
has such an, a strong impact on my childhood. I mean, they they show me what it's like to travel in space, to go on adventures, you know, to have really great experiences with my friends, to never truly worry about life's problems too much. You know, they they taught me a lot of things growing up, and and I you know I love them for that. While I don't, you know, I've said before, I don't really think that I owe them anything, but, you know, I can't, I can't deny that they had a really huge impact on my childhood, and they, they really, they provided a good escape for me, because, you know, we've all, all experienced those times where you come home and you were just severely agitated, you are angry, mad, sad, upset, whatever, and you just want to sit down and curl up with a good video game and play it. I cannot tell you how many times I have done that with Nintendo games. Actually, real quick, I'm going to end the video after this. I had a... I'm not going to get too heavy into this. I had a family member a few years back who passed away. And the only game that I immediately thought of that I wanted to play and just kind of escape into was Super Mario Galaxy 2. If you've been subscribed to me for a while, you know that there's one game that I have 100% complete in one run, like in one gaming session. And that was that game. I played it for two days straight. I, I was like so torn and hurt and sad that I just, I like fully escaped into that game. And I 100% complete Mario Galaxy 2 yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's just they Nintendo are so are like masters at crafting these really intricate gaming experiences that I think they are complete geniuses when it comes to level design and game design. I love the fact that all their games are polished and finished when they come out. Granted some, the one we talked about last week, <laughs> maybe every now and then there's one that's like light on content, but overall you know, I'd say 90% of Nintendo games are, like, completely finished and wonderful experiences when they come out. Are they all for me? No. But there is definitely an audience out there for Nintendo games. And I, I'm just, I'm grateful. I'm grateful that this company exists when I exist. That's, that's it. That was a good last line. We'll send on that. Alright guys, I'll see you later.